Hey guys, Drewski here, and today I'm going to be giving my thoughts over the Star Wars Battlefront 2 beta. So, EA Battlefront, the predecessor to this game, uh, came out I think about three or even maybe four years ago now. And uh, it, it was definitely a game that really changed how we think about the, uh, I, I guess, the depth in shooters. Because, you know, it had that authentic feeling of Star Wars, it had the graphics, it had the sound design, it had everything going for it. But once you got down to playing the game for a few days, maybe a week, maybe two, uh, maybe a month or two, it just began to feel extremely dry, at least for me. I didn't even pick the game up on release just because when I played the beta, I was like, wow, this is really, really cool. I'm happy that I get to play on Hoth and I get to experience being a Stormtrooper, Snowtrooper. Uh, I can play as Darth Vader every once in a while if I'm lucky enough to get the hero card. And it was pretty fun and pretty interesting. I leveled up all the way and I was done. Like, that was just, like, enough for me. Hop on back to Battlefield 4. And to me, it just, I think what really turned me off of the original was just the lack of depth in combat. Like, you get these star cards, you get these different weapons, but there's, like, in total, there's three different types of weapons. There's the jetpack, and then that's basically it. But in Battlefront 2, this is all changed. First off, the shooting mechanics have increased in quality a bunch since the first game. Blasters don't feel like they're shooting nerf darts anymore. The blaster velocity feels almost faster, like the lasers are going, or, or light beams, I don't know what you call them, are going faster through the air. It just makes combat a lot easier and faster paced where I can shoot somebody and actually hit them at a distance rather than just having to spray my blaster at them and hope for the best. The HUD is overall a lot simpler and the cards at the bottom right of the screen just aren't in the way anymore, though it can still feel cluttered at times whenever you're in an area where like let's say some update just happened in the game like oh no they blasted through the doors. It'll pop up in the gigantic middle of your screen and <laughs> you can't actually see if you killed somebody because it'll cover up if you killed somebody. Like usually if you take somebody down there's a big notification that goes up in the top center area of your screen but whenever like let's say the doors get exploded on galactic assault oh no you can't tell anymore <laughs> and there's some moments where the hud is just too much i think where i would rather just play the game and look at the pretty graphics than see all these different things that just gave me way too much information on screen but the graphics as i mentioned before are better than ever like definitely they're showing off a new particle system in the game where all these leaves or dust or dirt can be blowing in the wind and definitely on the galactic assault map on naboo it's extremely apparent just how much effort was put into this particle system. I mean, there are leaves, there are birds, there are just things flying everywhere. It's a very, very windy environment. You can tell that there's a lot of trees and a lot of life in the area rather than just dead air. Explosions and blasters and even the texture detail on the different character models look awesome. The animation system is also amazing. Playing as a jet trooper is probably one of my favorite things to do in this game just because I feel so cool flying the hell around the map. And especially as like the uh, rocket super droid, it just looks so cool blasting towards the enemy with a gigantic jetpack on your back. Additionally, this time around, the third-person camera is closer to the player. That is going to disable people from being able to look above obstacles as much as you used to be able to. I really, really like that because there's a lot more maps in this game that kind of have to do with hard, like, 90-degree corners. And when you have that closer third-person camera, it still is a usable third-person camera. But also, it's not going to enable you to very, very, like, much look over objects or look around objects while being in perfect safety. And the fact that you can easily just switch shoulders as well is quite nice, and just overall the combat works extremely well for third person and first person combat. The class system is great, there's like the basic rifleman, you've got the heavy assault gunner or heavy gunner, you've got the officer and the specialist. The um, assault class, I, I would just guess that's what it's called, is the standard rifleman, he's got you know your basic grenade and some different abilities like a shotgun ability where you can charge with a shotgun and really like take out some people pretty quick. You've got the heavy assault, which is our Arguably, I think the best one in the beta, and it's probably the most used. I see around, I would say, 60% of players playing with the Heavy Assault class. The Officer class is quite interesting as well. He has some uh, abilities where he can almost overshield his teammates around him to assist them. And he has, uh, like, let's say, a flashbang mine ability, I believe. 
And then the specialist is your all-around recon scout sniper class. But yeah, as I said before, the heavy gunner class is definitely the dominant one in the beta. Like, everybody plays it. It's so powerful because, one, you have the highest DPS, I think, of any of the classes. With the machine gun, you can do a lot of damage, and then you can just switch to your heavy minigun, which can, if you are attacking, like, let's say, the MTT, the main objective on Galactic Assault, can do a lot of damage for just being one standard uh, soldier on the ground. And then if somebody pops up to, close to you, you can just pop up your shield, crouch, and you've basically got this gigantic spherical shield that they really can't shoot like around, so they're going to have to shoot through it before they hit you. And that gives you that extra time, that little extra boost of time to be able to hit them and take them down before they take you down. That is definitely a huge advantage in combat. I guarantee there's got to be some type of KD ratio difference between heavy gunners and just the standard, rif standard rifleman class because the heavy gunner just has so many advantages in most situations that I don't know why you wouldn't play him. Now the hero classes are also really well done as well. Um, you don't just get them from basic luck of going into the right location of the map or knowing the game and being able to just sit at a certain location to finally get the hero character like you used to be able to in Battlefront 1. Um, now you spend coins or points that you get throughout the entire game. So instead of the game saying, hey, want to get, want to be Darth Vader? All right, sit in this one location until the hero thing pops up. It actually kind of forces you to, hey, you have to put some effort into the game. Like you have to kill people, you have to work for your team. And and therefore, you might be rewarded at some point with, you know, playing as uh, Darth Maul or Rey or Boba Fett or Han Solo. So the game is basically telling every player that the harder you work, the faster you can get to those hero classes. And in most games, you have the ability to get to that certain hero class you want. And so it kind of balances you out. You can either pick the lesser powerful classes a few times within the round, or you can pick the heaviest, most powerful classes in the round around once or even maybe twice. The Starfighter Assault game mode is awesome, and I'd be interested for more maps with more diverse locations of this, but the fighting is awesome. It's so much fun being able to just take out a few ships at a time just feels awesome. And I'll put some footage here of me flying as Poe Dameron for the first time. It was insane. graphics the audio and the immersion of this game mode is awesome and it's a really fun objective and just killing madness based game mode and it has a good balance of that as well the game mode comes with three different classes for your ships and it's definitely a more deep game mode than the first game was i just played actually for the first time um the starfighter game mode in battlefront one or ea battlefront one where you go into the death star with the x-wings and stuff and it just seemed it seemed okay it was all right, but I wouldn't play it again, and I actually quit mid-game just because I was kind of getting bored of it. But uh, once I found this game mode, I was impressed. Like, I was just like, I don't know what changed. I, I don't know if it was the, the lack of the weird auto-aim that used to be in the original battle, Battlefront game, and now it's more like a uh, you fire in front of people, and you have this nice heads-up display that tells you kind of where to fire, uh, or the abilities, or the heroes, but it just made it a lot more interesting for me to play on this new Starfighter Assault game mode. Strike is also fun too. It feels like a huge football game, but the goddamn button to pick up the device is bound to G on default, which confuses the hell out of everybody. I see people trying to pick up this item while getting shot at and they're like fimbling with their keyboard trying to find the G button which is just the weirdest thing ever I don't understand why you would bind this to G but overall the game mode is really really fun and I think that uh, new maps are definitely gonna bring some more light into it 
Galactic Assault is also great. The game mode adjusts for how much one team is ahead of the other and lasts longer if both teams are keeping up with each other. So let's say your team is much, much better than the other. Then that game is going to end really, really fast and you guys are going to be, you know, matchmaked with other people. But if your teams are very, very well balanced and it starts to get really competitive between those two teams, the game actually kind of uh, it goes on for about two or three times the amount of time just to allow those teams to get as much chances as possible to have a more equal balanced match that doesn't really have to do with luck. So guys, those are my thoughts over the Battlefront 2 beta. Uh, I would actually be really interested to see what you guys have to think about it as well. If you like it, if you dislike it, what things you like about it, and what things I might have missed in this review that are improvements or not improvements to the game. Comment it down in the comment section down below. I'll be discussing it a bit with you guys. And also check out our Discord as well, where in the future we're going to be probably grouping up with people to play this and also maybe Destiny 2 in the future as well. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.